Well, a warm welcome. It's Saturday, the 23rd of July now. I want to do two things basically today, fairly briefly. Um, great increase in BA5 everywhere. We know it's the dominant strain in the United States and the United Kingdom. We're pretty sure about Canada, and it's certainly the dominant strain in uh, Australia and New Zealand. It's just spreading absolutely prolifically. And the second thing I want to look at is actually fairly good news. I'm going to give evidence that infection with Omicron provides high levels of protection, and that, that, that is infection with the previous Omicron, like BA1 or BA2, provides pretty high levels of uh, immunity against Omicron BA4 and BA5. So pretty convincing evidence for natural immunity a bit later on. But let's just look at some orientation briefly, first of all. Now, um, this is where we're at in terms of uh, confirmed new cases. Now, this is not very reliable, of course. We, we know this. But Australia, New Zealand, Japan. Japan, definitely a big increase. United States, Ireland, United Kingdom, Netherlands and Canada. We can deduce from that that none of them are testing very much. Little else. But what's really important is the number of COVID patients in hospital per million. So the UK is now the highest. Higher than Australia. Then Ireland. Then Japan, we see, is increasing sharply. Then, the Can then Canada and the United States. And then the Netherlands, fairly low down in terms of hospitalizations. And, of course, people just, the tests just aren't being done and people aren't reporting tests. So it's hospitalizations really is now the total key uh, parameter. And uh, that's the situation with that. The UK doing worst of all. So that's the hospitalizations. But then if we look at the number of people in intensive care, well, again, we see the United States is doing worst of all, then Japan, then Canada and Australia, Ireland and the United Kingdom, actually really quite low in patients in intensive care. Now, we've noticed this as a pattern throughout for, well, for the last year or so, that the number of, uh, well, certainly since Omicron kicked in, let's, let's say in 2022, that the number of people in intensive care in the UK has gone down progressively, but in the United States, it's gone with the wave. So when there's an increase in Omicron, there's been an, in uh, an increase in uh, uh, intensive care admissions in the United States. And we've debated this many times. We think it's primarily due to the comorbidities and dietary factors uh, in the United States, which need addressed as a matter of urgency. So let's hope this pandemic is a bit of a wake-up call for uh, poorly treated and poorly managed comorbidities and poorly managed environmental and dietetic factors in the United States. Not saying we're great in the UK, we're not, we're terrible, but I think the United States probably has a particularly uh, um, difficult lesson to learn from, from that. Let's hope that's taken on board because we need to look for good things that are going to come out of this pandemic because it's, it's getting a bit tedious now. We need to look for good things for the way forward to improve health uh, into the future would be good. So intensive care, highest in the United States. Now deaths, th th this line here, you probably can't see it that well, but that's the Canada uh, line there. So obviously this isn't real. These are uh, poor uh, data artifacts in Canada. This is probably some catch up data here. But anyway, we see the deaths are high in uh, New Zealand, then Australia, the United Kingdom on a daily basis, Ireland, Canada. United States there, uh, Netherlands and Japan very low. But when we look at this as cumulative deaths, it put this, puts this in context. So the United States is highest, then the UK, then Ireland, then Netherlands, then Canada. Australia, New Zealand is going higher, but it's still lower than Australia and it's still um, higher than Japan with very low uh, death rates as we've, uh, as we've noticed before. So... Um, that's, that, that's, that's the, let's, look, let's look at some detailed data now from the um, UK Health Security Agency. Um, I mean, context, hopefully contextualise that a bit. Now, this is the latest data on the uh, variants uh, from the UK, uh, released on the 22nd of July. Now, uh, these are cases that were sequenced from the 10th of July to the uh, 17th of July, so for that week. BA2... Um, 3.4 percent, BA4, 17.2 percent, BA5, 78.7 percent, and others 0 0.7. Now, these numbers here in brackets, these are the numbers we looked at yesterday for the United States. So, we're in the UK, we're just looking at BA2, whereas in the United States, they're including BA2 12.1. 
um, 3.4 percent in the UK, and in that in that bracket for the United States, so pretty pretty close actually. BA4 17.2 percent in the UK, 12.8 percent in the United States, so very similar. BA5 basically the same in both countries in terms of percentages. Uh, 78.7 in the United Kingdom, 77.9 in the United States. Others in the uh, UK, 0.7, and the US data didn't register that. So really quite uh, incredible that. BA5, basically, should we say 78% in both uh, countries. So very, very parallel, very parallel uh, BA5 um, pandemic is actually the correct word and we assume that the numbers are pretty similar I did check the data this morning they're a bit delayed for, for New Zealand Australia looks like pretty similar numbers Canada probably again the data is delayed but pretty similar numbers so we actually see this is so transmissible it's actually increasing almost in tandem in, in different parts of the world quite um, quite incredible really um, very very similar numbers so remember the bracket ones are the United States now uh, new de designated variant 2.75 now this is the one that was first identified in India you might remember uh, there was a lot of alarm because it seemed to spread around India very quickly but I think part of the reason for that was India didn't really have a BA4.5 wave significantly and the BA2.75 was out competing the BA1 and the BA2 it looks like, and I think we can be more certain than we were a week ago, certainly on this, that the BA 2.75 is not outcompeting the BA 5. So I think this one's probably going to fizzle out. Um, I, I'm not hanging my hat on that. I think it's probably going to fizzle out because of the immune escape uh, from the BA 2.7. Uh, from the, the, the immune escape... The very high immune escape of the BA5 is out competing the BA2.75. So um, newly designated BA2.75, only identified on the 4th of July. It's a sublineage of BA2, as, as is the BA4, BA5, of course. These come from BA2, but have out competed uh, BA2. Um, eight additional mutations from BA2. Uh, 24 cases in the UK identified. Now, of course, th th this is sequence cases. Of course, we know the real number is going to be way higher than this. Um, but it, it, it is a low, very low percentage of BA2.75. So it hasn't taken hold. And I'm optimistic that it won't. Which we believe is good news because the, the BA5 is causing, as we'll see, the Omicrons are causing large amounts of immunity. But we'll see that in a minute. Um, so that's a bit about the BA 2.75 not taking off, which is good. Multiple other countries, but low numbers. Now, this is the, uh, we showed the equivalent from the United States, uh, which is kind of an uppy downy graphic. The, the UK one is a, is a kind of a side to side graphic, but here we have it. Um, now, this is, <laughs> if we can get this right. Um, so this is alpha. To, and then delta took over from, alpha at a very rapid rate of course uh, this green is the original uh, omicron this blue is one that never got never lasted long enough to be named it's just named by the date at which it started which is uh, may 2021 i think so that green's the omicron there kicking in as we see uh december-ish uh, 2021 uh, then that's the next omicron which came along so that's the original omicron that's the uh, ba2 omicron there and uh, this is the BA4 Omicron in grey, and the black is the BA5 Omicron. So, so there we go. Alpha, taken over by Delta, taken over by Omicron, taken over by Omicron BA2. BA4, 5 coming together, but now we see BA, BA, BA5 is, uh, predominate, is predominant now, and, and will become more and more so, because we do know it is out-competing the, uh, the other variants. So uh, it's always useful to see this in graphic form, quite startling sometimes. Now, this is, this is the paper I talked about, Protection of SARS Coronavirus 2, natural infection, natural infection, um, with uh, again, protection against reinfection from Omicron uh, BA4 and BA5 variants. Now, this is, this is from Qatar, and it's all of their COVID data. Um, data is very well collected in Qatar. Since the start of the BA4-5 wave, the study estimates the effectiveness of previous infection in preventing 
reinfection. This is about prevention of reinfection with uh, the BA4 and the BA5 variants. Uh, now, the use S gene target failure as a proxy for BA4, 5. We've, we've gone into that before. The other variants at the time um, would have uh, would be S gene uh, target positive is the difference. But if you've watched previous videos, we've covered that many times. Now, effectiveness of a previous Omicron infection, that's alpha, delta, whatever, original type, um, gives a protection of 15.1% protection uh, if you could say 15.1% efficacy against symptomatic infection with BA4.5 uh, and a 28.3% against any infection with BA4.5. So limited. Now we do believe, we do believe that even though these levels of protection are relatively low, it's going to give more protection against hospitalization, severe disease, death. Um, but we see that the, 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 the probability of reinfection remains pretty high. We've only got something like a 28% protection against infection, which explains why so many people are being infected by the immune escape that the, uh, the Omicron uh, BA4 and 5 are demonstrating. But if you've had a previous Omicron, what's your protection against BA4 or 5? Well, it's actually pretty high. It's about 61, 61 76% against symptomatic infection, 79% uh, against any, uh, any infection. So it's getting on for 80% protection. Now, of course, uh, as people immediately pointed out uh, in Nature, for example, um, the conclusion there from the authors is that uh, prior Omicron infection protects against BA4 or 5. But of course, everyone's pointed out the obvious. Um, the previous variants infected people a lot longer ago than the uh, Omicron variants. So you would expect the immunity from the Omicron variants to be better purely because it's more recent. But I do suspect it's more than that. And we did look at this yesterday on, on the ONS data as well. It looks like uh, Omicron infections are generating immunity against symptomatic infections with Omicron. How long that's going to last, we really don't know. But the, the point is there is good levels of natural immunity there. And these levels of protection, of course, from natural immunity are way higher than the levels of protection against a symptomatic infection or any infection uh, compared to the vaccine and the vaccines we're using of course is still the original Wuhan vaccine. So I think this is really quite uh, encouraging for the efficacy of natural infection and bodes well for the future. I really think this bodes well for the future because we are generating these immune responses. Now there are some cases of people being reinfected with Omicron We've known this anecdotally that some people have got Omicron reinfection within a, a few months, um, but this shows that it's statistically much less probable. This is the first real quantified data uh, that we have on this, and it's encouraging for natural immunity, is the main point of this research. UK uh, Health Security Agency. Now, this is, this is the, that, so that's the end of that bit. Now, 15% um, of people in England have never been infected with COVID. So here, here we see the UK Health Security Agency um, saying that 85% of us have now actually been infected, whether we know it or not. Uh, I'm in this category myself, in fact. I, I've had three doses of vaccine in, in the, the original waves. And I've never knowingly, I've never actually tested positive. I've tested maybe a dozen times. When I've been feeling a bit off and never actually tested positive. So, um, and of course, my GP won't test for antibodies. It's not policy in the UK to test for antibodies. Um, so w whether I've had it or not, I don't know. So I could be among that 15% or I could have had it and not tested at the time. Really want to know. It's a pity we don't do antibody tests in the UK, but <laughs> that, that, that comes with living in the UK. Unfortunately, we don't get, we don't get antibody testing. Anyway, um, so 85% of us have had it, 15% have never had it. Now, at the moment, 15% um, of people who've never had COVID is probably accounting for up to, uh, and I stress up to, 55% of infections. So it's getting round everywhere. We could say that um, BA5 reaches the parts that other viruses uh, don't reach because it is getting everywhere, every country and it's getting around all of us as individuals as well. It's doing a very thorough job. And uh, 
as we've seen, it looks like it's generating a lot of immunity in its track. So it's a problem now, there's hospitalizations. Now there is an increase in deaths to some extent, as we've seen, but it is generating immunity. We've, we've shown the data now that it's generating immunity, which, which encourages me really quite significantly. Um, so 45% um, of cases are now reinfections, of course, that means. Um, but um, the, point, the point I want to make here is the, the uh, well, th that's the overall UK figure. The UK has estimated that 10 million people have still never been infected in the UK as a whole. But of course, we might be missing some because first time infections, as opposed to reinfections, are more likely to be symptomatic. Um, so fewer subsequent infections are identified. So there might actually be more reinfections than the 45%. That is the, the, the point. So I think we wouldn't be too far out, too far off the mark, if we said that 50% of people in the UK that are currently getting infected have had uh, reinfections and 50% are uh, original infections. And again, as we say, that, that also bodes well for the development of natural immunity. So again, pretty encourage, I think that's pretty encouraging data. Um, the trajectories are long and tedious, uh, but good overall in the longer term, I believe. So um, the percentage of reinfections may actually be more than 45, is what we're saying. Could be about 50-50. Now, just briefly before we finish, New Zealand, which we looked at, population 5.1 million. Official COVID uh, deaths co um, coded as COVID-874. Contributing uh, 475 deaths. So... Uh, deaths in New Zealand. The reason I've, I've put this in is there's lots of um, headlines about increasing deaths in New Zealand, but remember they are still very low. Uh, they are the second lowest deaths, we're pleased to say, uh, with Japan, only Japan, only having uh, lower levels of of death. So there we go, BA5 running rampant around the world, um, causing problems, but also we now have quantitative data to show that the Omicron is uh, generating f fair amounts of immunity and people that are getting reinfected are getting less severe disease. And I expect this to go on getting less and less severe uh, as global herd immunity is the wrong word. Uh, community immunity is probably a better word, uh, is developing. But unfortunately, um, new variants could come along, um, but of course that is currently unknown. But if they do come along, the evidence so far is that the infections that we're getting now by the tens of millions are going to offer us, we expect, unless there's something very, very unknown, we strongly expect good levels of protection into the future. Thank you for watching.